biggest lesson I learned from my mom was to just focus on what I could do, not what I couldn't. There's a lot of things growing up that could have stopped me. A hundred broken bones could have stopped me. She never let any of that hold me back. Next guest has overcome some amazing obstacles in his life here in North Texas. He's become a two-time gold medal winner at the Paralympics as part of the USA's sled hockey team. We are so excited to welcome to the show Mr. Taylor Lipset. Hello, Hello. Thank you. And he's let me hold one of one of two of your medals. And I was saying this thing's pretty heavy, but you told me it only has an, a half an ounce of gold in it. Yeah, the Sochi one has about half an ounce of gold, and the Vancouver actually has two and a half ounces. Mm. So. Two gold medals. And where do these reside in your home? Uh, my wife actually actually hides them all the time as she changes the location <laughs> so no one ever knows where they are. Is that like a fun game that y'all play? No, I just ask for permission <laughs> when I need them. That's awesome. That's actually probably very smart though because yeah. those are those are worth so much and they're actually priceless too. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that's her, that's her thinking as well. So. well. Tell us about your journey. How long have you been training for this? Yeah, I started playing sled hockey in 2002 mm -hmm. uh, and then it probably took a few months before I started realizing that there was actually some potential there and yeah. uh, started taking it really serious. So uh, over the last 10 years, uh, I've been training for the Paralympics and uh, fortunate enough to go to three Paralympic Games and win two gold medals. So uh, definitely a lot of training and time has gone into it. Now you talk about your, I'm oh, sorry, no, I was saying you talk about your training. Is that happen here in North Texas? Is there a training facility here that you use or do you have to travel <coughs> to do that with some of your teammates? Uh, both. So a lot of it, uh, most of it actually does happen here in North Texas. I do CrossFit in Plano mm -hmm. uh, at Omega CrossFit yeah. and then I skate basically wherever I can get some ice time. Uh, and then as a team, we get together once a month in North Carolina and skate and uh, either for training or there we travel for tournaments and things like that. But like I said, 90% of it is on our own here at home. So. Now tell us a little bit about your brittle bone disease and you were talking a little bit about how much <laughs> participating in the sport helps out, right? Yeah, definitely. So I was diagnosed with uh, brittle bones when I was five years old. Uh, basically, my bones could break for little or no apparent reason when I was growing up. Uh, between the ages of 5 and 12, I broke about 85 times and oh had about 20, 25 surgeries. Um, wow. But yeah, as I started getting more active and uh, playing sled hockey and working out more and more, uh, developing my muscles actually helped protect the bones mm -hmm. uh, in certain situations. And uh, I actually have only broken four or five times since I started playing sled wow. hockey 12 years ago. That's yeah. awesome. Now, I want to talk about this large apparatus that yep. is in front of us. Um, for maybe people that don't know about sled hockey or about... Um, this tell, tell, kind of explain this apparatus and what this does exactly. Yep. So this is our sled. Uh, we strap into to the bucket part here. We just sit in it like this on the ice, and then we have two hockey skate blades mounted underneath here. Uh, they're regular hockey skate blades that we take off of skates. And then instead of one stick, we have two sticks, and they have metal spikes in the ends here. And that's what we use to dig into the ice to propel ourselves. Oh, wow. And then wow. we just slide our hand down to pass or shoot with the opposite end. It seems like a weapon, too. It can be. <laughs> it can be. Does but it get as tense as right. Does it get tense like hockey games? Is there fighting and stuff like that? Yeah, the U.S.-Canada rivalry is uh, pretty intense, and we don't ever stab on purpose. Um, <laughs> but it does happen. I never intended to, yeah. but... If you YouTube sled hockey fight, I'm not going to say you won't find something. All right. <laughs> nice. We had a silver medalist in a few weeks ago, and he talked a, a lot of the credit to his mother. And then you mentioned that in your video here, and I was so touched about how these young athletes Athletes and star athletes are, are crediting so much to their mother. Tell us about your mom. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when doctors diagnosed me with brittle bones when I was little, it, I could imagine as a parent it'd be, it would have been easy for her to kind of mm -hmm. put me in a bubble mm -hmm. and be super overprotective and, you know, not, not let me try a lot of things out. Um, but she never did. Whatever I wanted to do, she encouraged me to go try different things and get involved. And, and um, now she has a son that has yeah. two Olympic medals right, to, to, right. Exactly. to show for that. Exactly. And I so. think one of the great things you're doing, we were talking a little bit uh, today about how you're going to meet someone who also has brittle bone disease, and you're like this inspiration of hope for other people, right? Definitely, yeah. Today is actually uh, Osteogenesis Imperfecta Awareness Day, uh, which is also known as Wishbone Day. Mm -hmm. So I'm meeting a little boy that actually is in Mesquite as well tonight oh. and his family, and uh, just gonna connect with them and you know maybe develop something into a mentorship and friendship oh, with them. That and would be amazing. Have someone that he can look up to as he grows up and can it's relate wonderful. to him. Now I'm sure you'll be a, a, a Great source of inspiration and, and mentorship to him. Is there somebody that inspires you and has mentored you? I hear you're a big fan of the Dallas Stars. Are there any? I am a huge fan of the Dallas Stars. Um, as far as players go, Sagan uh, has become my new favorite player. Uh, I've worked closely with his foundation this season. 
Um, his foundation and the, the sled hockey program I run here in Dallas, we take disabled individuals to every home Stars game, oh, wow. uh, and he provides a suite for us to go to, and then we get to take the players down to meet him and other players after the game. Uh, so that's been a really cool experience this year. Um, but my doctor actually inspired me as well as, as a young kid. Uh, he was in a car accident when he was um, around six or seven years old, lost both his parents, and had a, a number of traumatic injuries, and uh, overcame all of that and put himself through college and med school wow. to become a pediatric wow. physician. So uh, he kind of, you know, showed me that life isn't over just because you break a couple bones and uh, wow. encouraged me to go after my dreams. Now, are we going to see it. you at the Paralympics in 2018? I say never say never, <laughs> um, but uh, as of right now, I'm uh, calling it quits. Uh, it's been 10 years, uh, so I've accomplished a lot. I've accomplished everything you can accomplish. Like Michael Jordan, he keeps saying he's going to retire, but he never does. Are you <laughs> no, going to have I, a comeback? I don't know. We'll see. Other players have done it, so right. I'm not going to throw Hanging that up your about, possibility out, but um, we'll see. Well, you're truly an inspiration, and I know your mother must be proud, especially for Mother's Day, getting two, two big gold medals from yep. you. That's yep. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh,